what's up guys welcome to house of lasers uh, one of our members and another laser user asked us if we could create a quick video of how to do background removal so i wanted to go over this kind of quick on how we do it here and it's fairly simple but there's a couple of different options that i want you to know about ahead of time first the eraser and we're using photoshop uh, Photoshop CE or CC. Um, over here on the left hand side, you have your eraser tools, and there's a couple different ones. Uh, if we slide over and we right click on it, we have our eraser tool, our background eraser tool, and our magic eraser. So if we go in and use the background eraser, it's actually going to erase all the way down to the canvas and the checkered dots in the background, those are your transparency. So none of that equals anything once you save it. It is clear space. Um, if we were, if we go back, um, if we were to use a standard eraser tool, it's going to erase in the color that is over here. Um, so the white is right there. If we flip flop them, and it's going to be purple. We don't want that. We don't want white either. Um, you can use white and then you can just basically select that color and delete it. Uh, but you're just adding more processes to it. Now, the third way would be Magic Eraser Tool. And it is going to select as many of the same colors or hues uh, you can set a tolerance up here. It's going to do its best to find edges and erase only like colors. Um, it could be dangerous, it could grab extra stuff, but it does work. Um, especially if you tune it down a little bit. Like, I think if we go up and do his hair, we're probably going to get a bunch of stuff to remove, maybe. Um, so far, it's working pretty good. But there will be a point where you erase something, like if I set this tolerance up to 40. And you can see it started to remove some of his hair. There you go. So you have to make sure that the tolerance is right, otherwise you'll be chasing yourself. Um, so this is relatively easy to do. You will still have to go back and, and change or not change, but um, you know, brush up some finer details because you're not going to be able to get in close enough um, all the way around. So I just go through with my eraser afterwards and I touch it up. All right, so those are a couple of the different options. And right now I'm going to revert this back to the way it was. And I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. Um, and I'll try to explain it the best that I can as I go along. My first step is to create some type of cutout or marquee around whatever I want. So I don't want the houses in the background. I don't want the street. I don't want anything besides a little bit of the grass down by the dog's feet and the officer's feet. Because otherwise um, you're going to be having to fill in his his shoes and missing parts of the dog's foot is just going to look silly if you just erase that. So if I pick my elliptical marquee and I create that around both of them, I have it overlap over their feet just by a hair. So now you see I have my oval. I'm going to right click and hit feather. Now this is the radius by pixel. Um, I prefer right around a 20 to 30. We'll do 30 this time. <clears throat> I'm going to right click again and then I'm going to cut out. So I'm, basically what I did was hover over this line I've just created, right click, layer via cut. And once it's cut, then you can actually see that there is a fade and a cutout. What we do is we go down here and we turn it off, or you could even select it and trash it. We don't need it. 
So now I have less stuff to erase. My second step after I created my feathered oval or square or whatever I was going to work with, I would go in and either use my eraser tool or I would use my magic eraser and, and try to get some of the stuff out of the way quickly and then just go back through and get all of the minor details. So, like I said, this goes pretty darn quick once you, uh, once you know where to grab everything from. Um, at this point, I'm just going to use my eraser tool. I'm going to zoom in. And I'm going to make this bigger by right-clicking. I can adjust the pixel size of my eraser tool. And I'm going to erase all of this stuff up top because I don't want it showing up in my engraving. So I usually will go over all of my canvas area that is supposed to be transparent. Just in case there's any remnants, because if there is remnants left over, the laser will see it, Lightburn will see it, our D-Works will see it, and it will try to engrave that. Uh, it'll also mess up your framing. So you try really, really hard to, uh, to get rid of any type of fragments that might be left behind. But this, as you can see, it doesn't take very long to to get this all taken care of. And you can make this as small or as large as you need to to get it done quickly. Uh, now that I'm going to get closer in, I will just change the size of it a little bit. And, and at this point, once you're, once you're working this close um, and with very specific colors, you might be able to use the magic eraser because there's a definite contrast, obviously, between his ear and the rest of the stuff that's in the background. I uh, just got to be careful that you're not trying to erase his face and his hair <clears throat> back button again as usual is your friend make this a little smaller again just so I can get right in here and get all of this stuff gone. Now I'm by no stretch of the imagination am I a Photoshop genius, um, but I know how to use it for the stuff that I need to use it for. And I believe tomorrow or coming up soon here, I'm going to have the second video for photo editing and prepping for laser engraving. And that one's going to be getting into some major details of how to get a really crappy photo engravable or a moderate photo. All right, and then, like I said, just look for some of these uh, crazy, like this is all ripply here. So I would just go through and kind of flatten it out. And then look around, look around the whole picture and see if you can find any type of remnants of anything that's left over. Uh, you know, I don't like a lot of this stuff here, so I'll just get rid of it. And that's really it. Um, at this point, you would start doing your photo edits because... You don't want to do your photo edits of contrast and you know brightness and and sharp sharpening um, with all of the other information in the background because you 
again, you tend to, to compensate for those things that you're not even going to be lasering. Um, the important stuff is the subject of the engraving, um, not the background, unless, unless the background is, uh, is what it's going to be engraved. But at that point you're, you're not removing the background. So that point is mute, but once you're done, um, always save it as a PNG. A uh, PNG will uh, be lossless, so you can resize it without deg degradation of the image, and it also retains the transparency. And uh, what I be mean by that, if you saved it as a bitmap or a different file format, it will save all of that transparency as a white background, and if you're doing a negative, it will engrave uh, black, or it'll engrave, and you don't want it to because your your the whole process here was to get rid of the background. So I hope that helps. If you guys have questions, uh, feel free to put it in the comments, and also make sure you subscribe because we are going to have uh, some serious content coming out here kind of rapidly. So uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you wanted to see anything else done um had any other questions about how to do other things also put that in the comments and we'll do our best to get that on youtube appreciate it all right so if any of you guys are mac users i uh, just want to let you know about a cool function if you're using photoshop um, it is compatible with an ipad using sidecar and what that does is you can basically share your screen uh, stay hydrated, my friends. Uh, you can share your screen from the your MacBook Pro, your whatever you're using, to your iPad, and basically you could use the Apple Pencil. And to get around some of these detailed areas really easy, uh, that's an option. So I don't use it that often, but uh, just want to let you know that it is available and it makes things a little bit easier if you want to do it that way. All right, guys. Thanks for joining.